When I ask white middle class people what they love about living in London, then they always tell me it's because of the cultural diversity. As a black woman with 120 cousins and four generations in the city, it always perplexes me to what this actually means. It would seem to mean being near us on the bus or in the shop, but not actually engaging with us in a meaningful way. This is an issue because it means that the idealism of London life is a lie. We are not a multicultural melting pot. We are, in fact, a city that is segregated by class, race and economics. I am what Brexiteers call the metropolitan liberal elite. I'm a publisher with an imprint. I'm married. I own a Zone 2 property. I have a son in a, in a prep school. I love European city breaks and eating in fabulous London restaurants. The contradiction as it stands is that I'm a black woman. And when I was 16, I left home and have never had any financial support from my family. I have had to fight to thrive in a country and an industry that is hostile to the very essence of my existence. There are not many black people in my position, so I'm here to tell you that we are being penalised for being born in a country that has been swallowed by capitalism. We are being left behind despite our amazing talent pool. I want you to stop saying that you don't see colour. I want you to see our colour. I want you to understand our journey. And I want you to treat us as equal. I am urging you to think about the active role in which you play in equality in our society. It's a fact that immigrants work really hard. When my grandparents came from Jamaica to England, it was never their intention to get a council house. In the 1960s, before most black areas like Camden, Notting Hill, Hackney, Peckham, Brixton became ripe for gentrification and our lifestyles deemed authentic or real or even edgy, black people like my grandparents worked hard. They had to endure racism and they overcame the odds, saved for a deposit and bought houses all over London with a concentration near new hospitals in the south. Brixton has overcome riots and racial tensions and is now the best place to get jerk chicken. <laughs> the shift from bought houses to social housing happened under Margaret Thatcher, whose policies deterred young couples from living together for fear that they would lose their benefits. This created single motherhood and a dependency on the state. For decades, councils have moved people of colour and working classes out of London. Recently, there was a shocking report that in the Haygate estate, 3,000 flats were demolished and none of them went to the people that had lived there after they'd been turned into luxury apartments. The property developers made £200 million. For us, it feels as though there's active ethnic and class cleansing allowed by our government. We have few civilian allies, no one shouting on our behalf, and so the developers get away with it again and again. The white working classes believe that people of colour and immigrants are taking what's rightfully theirs, and the core issues just don't affect the liberals. To me, it feels as though the revolution will be televised when the people that we need to stand alongside us, educated, liberal, so-called Londoners, can no longer afford flat whites and extensions with bifold doors. Join me at the school gates, where I'm often told by parents who have bought properties in close proximity to outstanding state schools that they are thrilled that their children are going to school with diverse families. Having been educated in outstanding state schools, I know that this cultural diversity at best extends to your child not being racist. As I rejoice at the, ch the weddings of my childhood friends, and I'm often the only person of colour, I find myself thinking, how did this happen? It's the same at my son's first school, a state school. Very few children of colour and very few from different economic backgrounds. In my experience, the parents who openly celebrate the idea of diversity are taking a moral high ground, yet secretly pleased to have saved on school fees. 
This is transparent and insulting. The irony is that the prep school is bursting with diversity. As middle-class parents of colour, we know we have to ensure our children's future with better education, otherwise they will continue to be left out of the workplace. At my work, there are 150 people in my division. I am the only black person. In fact, I'm the only black fiction publisher in corporate publishing. How did this happen in an industry that prides itself on storytelling across cultures? The industry changed from being smaller publishing houses to large corporate structures with quick growth requiring quick solutions, resulting in nepotism. Then it became a case of lazy recruiting, at best unconscious bias, and at worst structural racism. Think about it. There's no way that an educated British person of colour is unqualified to do a job that a white person can do. Have you noticed that people of colour are culturally excluded from many social activities in London? From pubs in Hackney or Peckham to restaurants in Soho and even clubs playing urban music. A token one or two of us make liberals feel better and more inclusive. We are not a trend. We are a crucial part of the fabric of this society. Even the Women's March in London earlier in the year was missing women of colour and LGBTQI plus groups, whose intersectional arguments were considered too radical. Because liberals were more miffed than angry, the protest ended up being a lovely ramble through the capital. This isn't good enough. I want to live in a society that thrives with equality. I want the debate of diversity to move away from the boardroom and the pub and towards positive action. I would like you to think about where difference is missing from your table and your Facebook and what you can do about it. I want you to take to the streets. I want you to stand in solidarity and raise your voices at the injustice of inequality and racism. I want you to own your privilege and use it for the force of good. And I want you to remember that not being racist is not good enough. Thank you.